So um, this part will be really brief. Um, I just want to go um, over uh, again, um, kind of the difference between regression and state space models. And I, I wanted to go over that because a number of you have a, um, um, you're using a, a regression of some type or a GAM with correlated errors as one of your models that you're, you're fitting. And uh, that, that's absolutely fine for the course. Um, but I just want to make sure that you, you have a handle on how these are different than a uh, state space model or model with a, a hidden random walk. And this is um, a lot of this you've, you've seen uh, from Mark's lecture on DFA. And if you remember that lecture, he gave this equation here where he showed you um, your, your basic linear regression here, or basic regression. I'm not saying it doesn't have to be linear. It could be nonlinear. This particular example is linear, um, but what I'm going to say, it applies to nonlinear cases too. So you've got some response variable here. It's univariate in this case. You have some fixed effects. So you've got, in this case, you got your intercept, you have your covariates, and you have your uh, effect of that covariate. So that's your fixed part. And then you've got this random, you've got your errors and divided this into two components. We've got this random, random walk or ARMA. So autocorrelated, let's just be really general, autocorrelated part F. And then we have this independent component here. So when you are doing a regression, linear or nonlinear, with correlated errors, um, what that's allowing you to do is to estimate these parameters correctly. And it's going to take um, into account that there's correlation in your errors and that your data are not entirely independent. So you shouldn't treat them as entirely independent. So. Um, you know, things like your confidence intervals on your estimated parameters are going to be different when you have highly correlated data. And that's what these, you know, correlated errors are allowing you to um, account for. But in many applications in environmental science, well, in, in just many applications in general, you want to model. Um, I don't know if you can see my thing here. You know, you want to model this part right here. You want to model that autocorrelated part. It's not just that you want to take, take it into account that your errors are, are autocorrelated. You would actually like to know what that autocorrelated random walk is, because in the context of your analysis, that means something. Um, you know, it's... Yeah, it's, it's some hidden random walk that, that means something in your application. Okay. Clear. Okay. So let's go. Hello. Stop that. Okay. Okay. So let's, let's think about um, kind of like we have this model here, and now um, we're thinking about, oh, okay, we might do some kind of uh, regression with correlated errors. And um, we want to step back and, and think, think about, well, okay, well, what are we going to do if, like I said, if what we care about this autocorrelated process, okay, so that's going to be a problem. Um, or what if we wanted not the expected value of the fixed part, but we wanted the expected value of the fixed and the F together. So, oh no, deny, don't, 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 don't deny, don't do that. Okay, so we want that alpha, the beta X, and the F. Um, or also, we, we might want to think, well, what if we wanted the expected value of the data conditioned on all the data prior? 
Um, how would we go about getting that? Um, and then lastly, we, we need to think about, okay, well, what if we wanted to forecast why? And all those kind of things, like if, if you are asking those questions about your model, you really need to think carefully about how you're getting that information. And I'll show you a couple examples. So let's simulate some data here. And I have as my F, I have that um, AR1 process. Phi is not necessarily one. This isn't necessarily a random walk. Um, and my T, my covariate is just T. So it's, if I have N time steps, it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to N. Okay, so something really simple. And then my Y function, I'm gonna get rid of the intercept. Um, it's just a linear function of time. And then I have that uh, autocorrelated F, and then I have some uh, not uh, correlated error, my VT. So really simple. So um, I wrote a little function that would simulate data that looks like that. And I'm gonna show you data from uh, two examples. And so in the first one, I set phi equals to a 0 0.8. So that is a stationary process. It's correlated, but it's stationary. So it's just kind of fluctuating around like that. And then in the second one, I set um, phi equals one. So it's a random walk. So what I'm gonna illustrate here is kind of it's not exactly the problem, but it's something you really have to think about. If, if you think that there's a random walk in your data, that you need to be really careful. And how do you know if there's a random walk in your data? Well, it's kind of application specific. Um, I mean, you, you think about your system and your problem and, and you decide if you think there's a random walk in there. Um, okay, so here's what the data look like. And you can see that on the left side, uh, sorry, on the right side, maybe it's not completely obvious that there's a random walk in there. I mean, okay, maybe at the beginning, I know, that's kind of funky looking and maybe tip you off, there's something going on there. Um, but it's not completely obvious. So now let's do a linear regression with correlated errors. So we want to account for the fact that the errors are correlated. If I did a sim simple linear regression and I did the ACF, you would see very clearly it's highly autocorrelated. Both of those uh, data sets are. Um, so I'm going to use Ottawa Rima. Um, doesn't really matter. They all kind of are going to work similarly. Um, so this is Ottawa Rima. And when I um, pass in X reg, what I'm doing is a linear regression with correlated errors. That's what that, that does. And now what I'm gonna show you on this side is I'm gonna show you forecast. And the, um, the shaded bits are the um, forecast from the estimated model. And both of these models correctly fit and they correctly took into account autoregression in the errors, but the um, the way that these this is taking into account um, correlation, it's assuming this stationary error. It's kind of general. Um, but the one on the right, uh, my error was, was a random walk, and so you can see on the left, it did. Um, oh, sorry. What you're seeing here is the shading is the estimate. And the blue are the true. Um, so I simulated from truth, so I knew it was truth. And so the, um, the red dots are the true 80% intervals. And they should kind of uh, be about as wide as the dark gray. And you can see the problem here. So like when that autocorrelated error was in fact stationary, it did okay. I mean, it's a little biased, but it's about the right width, right? And then on the right, you see the problem when that autocorrelated error is a random walk. Like it gets it completely wrong. It, the, the variance is, is 
completely wrong. And that's just a really common feature when you've got these hidden random walks in your data and you're not taking them into account. You get these kind of problems. So if you think there's a random walk in your data or you're trying to model random walks, then you use a state space model where you can incorporate that into your model. Okay, so a second thing that you need to be careful about whenever you're doing uh, regression with correlated errors is that um, what whatever um, function you're using, what it considers fitted, the model fit can be really different. So um, this is just a word of warning, um, just to make sure that you understand what, um, what, fun what the function will output as the model fit. And here's an example. So um, I fit the data with uh, GLS, which is going to um, be able to model correlated errors. And if I were to use fitted, which is going to get you the model fits, what that would do is get you the fixed effects. But if I did the same thing with a REMA, the output from a REMA, it would be very different. Let's look at this. I showed a picture here. So here's the difference. So that red line is the fitted values from a GLS fitted model. And then on the right, it's the fitted values from a ARIMA model. And you can see they're very different. And it's not that one is right or one is wrong. It's just that um, the output is, is different things. So for GLS, what it's giving you are the fixed effects. And what ARIMA gives you is the expected value I wish I'd written this differently. Um, I'll just say it in words. It, what ARIMA is giving you is the expected value of yt, so the expected value, say, of this y, conditioned on all the data prior. So think about it. Those errors are correlated. That means if I know the data in the previous time step, I know I have an estimate of what the error was, so I have an estimate of what the error will be at the current time step. So I can use that information about the autocorrelation and the errors to give me a better estimate of what Y would be at time T. So it, it's like a one step ahead forecast. Um, so that, that's what ARIMA is outputting. That's why that looks uh, so different. Um, in a state space context, um, we often will also output what are called the smoothed estimates. So that would be your estimate of the value of y. It's not really the value of y. It's the value of, of the kind of the expected y using all the data. So you use both future and past. That would be like a common, common thing you'd get out of a state space model. Okay. Okay, last thing I want you to uh, keep in mind is that a regression model with correlated errors is really different than what's called an ARMA X. And we've been using ARMA Xs a lot. So here's, here's the difference. So this is a regression with autocorrelated errors. Here's my Y, here's my fixed effects, and here's my error, and this error is some autocorrelated process. So you can still think about this as it's kind of like a straight line with wiggles around it. That's really different than what's called the ARMA X model. So this would be like in our Mars equations when we had our covariates appear in the X part of the equation that's an ARMA X process, and it looks like this. Then we have our Y is a function of Y at T minus one, and then our covariates are explaining the process variance. The process like that is really different, and that's, you know, again, that's in the, in the area of more classic, you know, autocorrelated models are, and also in state-space models a lot. Okay. 
that is all I wanted to say about that. Any questions?